Hi folks, Dan with High Country again. The rains have come. We're filming on location one last time in the living room, but the rains have come. The deserts are saved another year. So we'll be getting back outside here very, very soon. It's raining outside as we speak. I'm waiting on some climactic situations for our next video on the uh, Backpacking 101 or Intro to Backpacking series. So we're going to take a step forward into something that I was actually going to do a bit down the road, but this is as good a time as any. Now I want to start this off, I want to preface this entire thing by saying I do not consider myself a survival expert. I am not a survivalist, I am not a bushcrafter, that is not what I do. I am an old school country boy who spent a lot of time in the boonies, I have learned a few things, and as a boy I listened to the older people around me, and so I picked up some bushcraft skills, but I am not an expert in the field, and I'm going to stay out of things that I don't know. What we're going to discuss today is something that I call pocket survival. Uh, what can I carry with me day to day that will measurably increase my chances of survival should I find myself in a bad situation? Well, the first thing that springs to mind for me of things that I could carry which will get me out of a bad situation would be the 3rd Marine Division. I suspect with 3rd Marines in tow, I could probably get out of most bad situations. The problem there is 3rd Marines is not easy to carry and they eat a lot. No offense to the Marines out there. So what can I more realistically carry day to day that will measurably increase my chances of success in a bad situation? Aboriginal peoples the world over will tell you that you need two tools in order to survive. You need a knife and a way to make fire. Okay, simple enough. Knife and a way to make fire. That's easy. Knife. Way to make fire. Well, at least in theory. There we go. See, way to make fire. See how easy that was? Almost as easy as a stick. Well, there's my knife and my way to make fire. I don't think this is really a convenient thing to haul with me day to day so that I have a knife and a way to make fire. Besides, they won't fit in my pocket. So, where can we go from there? More realistically, let's talk about a knife and a way to make fire. This is my personal knife. This is a K-Bar Bowie. It's a little bit of a wide belly, stainless steel. I've had it about 35 years. It was my grandfather's knife before me. It is stainless steel. I do like stainless because it is low maintenance for casual use, even though it doesn't take quite as good an edge. Great knife. It is what I carry if I'm carrying a knife on my belt. Problem here is it won't fit in my pocket. And there's a lot of places in America, it's simply not legal to carry a knife like this hanging on your belt. That's just the way that it is. So let's look a little more deeply. What can we carry in our pocket that will measurably increase our chances of survival? Knife and a way to make fire. Well, as far as a knife and a way to make fire, we've got a Leatherman or a Swiss Army knife. And for a way to make fire, we have your basic big cigarette lighter. Let's go from there. All right, we're going to start this segment off with a demonstration of why I carry Bic Cigarette Lighter and why I feel it is one of the finest tools in the world for both daily use and just general survival. Um, as I said with Jet Boil, Bic may not want my endorsement, but they're going to get it. I carry Bic every day, all day, no matter what I'm doing. It is in my pocket every day, and this is part of why. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in this cup of water, and we're going to have a conversation while it floats there for a few minutes to get my point across. Now, we were discussing pocket survival and knives. So we're going to come back to the Swiss Army knife and the Leatherman tool. Now, they both have advantages and disadvantages. As you'll notice, the Swiss Army knife is smaller than the Leatherman tool. Uh, and I am going to say Leatherman tool. Leatherman is still made in America. Gerber is not. So I go with Leatherman. Now, as far as Swiss Army knives go, there are two companies, Victorinox and, Wing Victorinox and Winger, and I'm probably pronouncing them both incorrectly, but they are both legitimate Swiss Army knives. They are both official companies. Victorinox has recently purchased Winger or some years ago, so you may only see one knife, but if you're purchasing one used on eBay or something of that nature, Victorinox and Winger are both genuine Swiss Army knives, and you'll get good quality. Now, there's something I am going to suggest on whatever you carry, and that is a locking blade. When the blade is all the way out, it locks in 
place and it will not fold up on your hand unless you literally break the blade off. I think that is imperative for a knife that may actually need to be used for something more than spreading butter or opening a box. So if you're going to get a Swiss Army knife, I'm going to recommend a Victorinox or a Winger, and I'm going to recommend a locking blade. There are other tools here, one of which will come into play in a moment. Here's the Leatherman. Uh, this is a Leatherman that I've carried for a long time. It actually rides around in the glove compartment of my Toyota Land Cruiser in case I need a tool. Also a wonderful piece of equipment, and it does indeed have a knife blade of its own. Now, let's get a little quick side-by-side -side demonstration here. The Leatherman is a little longer overall. The blade itself is roughly the same length within a few fractions as you can tell. Now here's my complaint with the Leatherman. You'll notice it's a narrower profile top to bottom and it's a much finer tip which to me there are advantages to that. You can bore holes that kind of thing but we have other tools for that purpose. It makes the tip a little too fragile for my liking. And here's the other problem I have with Leatherman tools. As I mentioned locking blade, non-locking blade. Now, because of the way the tool is designed, it won't fold up on your hand unless you've got it open, in which case it can indeed fold up on you. But if you've got it locked into proper use, it won't fold up, but it is not a rigid blade, and I find that very, very irritating. Now, the advantage here is with the either one, you have a knife, and with either one, you also have some other tools for you to use, and that may be important in a survival situation. Uh, in fact, for pocket survival, these may be a better choice than an actual just single knife because there are other tools available. Now, I'm going to stick with the Swiss Army knife on this because it's what I carry in my pocket every day for the next portion of our demo. As you can see, our big cigarette lighter has been soaking during this conversation. It is thoroughly wet by now, but we have a cure for that. We're going to take it out. Just shake the water off off camera. Now, this is where my description in the first video of freezing to death by a river in Montana and trying to make a bow drill that you've never made comes into play. We have here a big cigarette lighter, which can be used with one hand, by the way, and we'll discuss that again a little later. Here's one of the tools I told you about on the Swiss Army knife. That's an awl, which you can drill holes with, hence you don't necessarily need the very fine tip of the Leatherman. I'm gonna insert my awl underneath the little metal flap on top of the big striking wheel and pop it out of the way. Now that gives me access to the wheel itself. Gives me a chance to shake it off a little bit better. I'm gonna blow on it a couple of times. Then I'm gonna simply run it down my shorts. You can't see that, I'm off camera, but I'm just gonna run it down my shorts or my shirt and the wheel is gonna dry things off. Just friction in my shirt. Now, it's only been a few seconds and as you can see, we've got spark again and now we have flame. It's soaked in a cup of water for a couple of minutes while we talked, and then in 30 seconds, I have flame with one hand. If my left arm is broken or damaged or doing something else, I have flame with either hand in seconds. Now, I do not recommend taking that safety catch off. They're there for a reason I leave them on unless I'm in a problem situation like this. That is why I carry a big cigarette lighter, and that is why I swear by them. So, Swiss Army knife, big cigarette lighter. That's my recommendations for your pocket survival every day. If you choose to carry a Leatherman, I don't think you're undergunned. I think it's going to be fine for you. I do not recommend other lighters. Mythbusters did a test on these. They will not blow up in, even in the heat of your car in the middle of the summer, so they're certainly not going to overheat on your person. Uh, they're good for a couple of hours continuous use. Turn it on and let it burn for anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours and five minutes, depending on the lighter, because they don't all get the same amount of fuel from the factory. But I think it's a superlative tool. Uh, if you choose to carry a mini Bic, I think that's perfectly acceptable. You're, let's keep something in mind. In the North American continent, a survival situation is generally going to last 72 hours. It's the rule of threes. You can live three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. So a survival situation on the North American continent will generally be resolved positively or negatively in 72 hours. Your cigarette lighter is going to last you 72 hours. It will light a couple of hundred fires for you, I promise. Now, people are gonna say, Dan, you could use a fire steel. Well, yes, I could use a fire steel. What is a fire steel? What we call a fire steel now is not. An actual fire steel in the, in the time they were commonly used was a piece of high carbon steel. Often they had a thumb hole in them so that you could get a good rip on them. 
and you could knock flint or chert against them to get a spark, to create a spark in your tinder bed. What we now call a fire steel, or, or some people more properly call a ferro rod, is a rod. And it is made of ferrocerium, which is an alloy that was invented or discovered in the early 1900s by an Austrian, if I'm not mistaken. Don't hold me to that. But basically what you do here is you're going to take the blade of your knife and you're going to scrape it down and it will create a shower of sparks. I'm not going to do that on my tablecloth here, but I'm going to put a video in here so you can see how it works. Now, you can see the shower of sparks, and if you put those, that shower of sparks down into a nest of pine needles, fluff, something dry, a bird's nest, it will catch fire, and you can start your fire that way. Here's my complaint. It really requires two hands. Yes, you could pin this under your foot, and maybe you could make it work with your other hand, but it's really designed to work with two hands. In addition, now this is an older one, it's a little bit heavier, and it's longer than a lot of your modern uh, ferro rods, but it's, it's as big as a cigarette lighter, and it's as heavy as a cigarette lighter, it takes two hands to use, and it doesn't give me flame, it gives me sparks. So I still have to do my work to make this fire start, as opposed to just put the flame down in it and start. Now, something interesting, I mentioned that they were ferrocerium. Even the flints in this big cigarette lighter are not really flint, they are ferrocerium. And that is that material I was discussing earlier that the ferro rod would be made of. So there we go, folks. My rationale behind pocket survival. Swiss Army knife, big cigarette lighter. Now I will give you a couple of little asides on this. If you're gonna carry this, if you're gonna go with this, with this route, don't get a cheap cigarette lighter. I've had brand new cheapies fail within minutes of purchasing them. If you wanna carry a Zippo, they're a good reliable lighter. They do not last as long as a Bic. There have been a number of tests proving this in the past. I don't think I, there's any need for me to repeat one. If you're going to carry a pocket knife, if you're going to follow the system, get a good one. Don't buy a tool that you think you're going to count on in a bad situation and have it fail you because then you can't count on it and your plan is out the window. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. I hope you've taken something away from this conversation. Uh, who am I, the ultimate arbiter of all that you should carry? No, but you should carry something and I can't think of anything more important than a knife and a way to make fire. I'm Dan with High Country. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time.